Hello, welcome to another episode of Britain Poland. So this episode is going to be about Katowice. Now for a while I was struggling to think of kind of an equivalent in the UK for Katowice but I think I've kind of made a decision. So this part of Poland, this is like uh, in the southwest of the country and it's interesting you could say it's a bit like Scotland because uh, there are many calls for it to be independent uh, they have their own language or their own dialect which is uh, distinct to Polish uh, the history is very very mixed um, with uh, this location being you know and the surrounding locations being split between Germany Austria and Poland many times over the years but I've t just uh, taken a week out here to uh, try and get to know the area. I have to admit, I was a bit surprised by how much there was to do just around this one city. So I originally planned to just like do Katowice in a day. It took me three days, um, but I'll show you in the video everything that's going on. And getting back to the kind of equivalent in the UK, so I can't think of a specific city but I would say that this region is probably similar to our Cornwall. You know, there's a strong mining history here, uh, you know, and it's kind of like, it's one of the areas that was really impacted by the Industrial Revolution. But again, I'll go into that. So please stay tuned, hope you enjoy the video. Today's tour will take start at the Rheinex Square. Uh, this is right in the heart of the city. As uh, you can see, it's a very relaxing place, very open place, by far the largest square uh, you'll find in Katowice, surrounded by the tourist office, various office buildings, restaurants, uh, bars, etc., etc. The real heart of the city. With Katowice, you've actually got a lot to see not just in the city, but outside of the city as well. So much that actually this video is going to be in two parts. So I'm doing my best to kind of give you the full picture. One of the first areas you'll probably see is the cultural zone. So this is just north of uh, the center. And one of the first things you'll spot here is the Silesian Insurgents Monument, which was uh, commemorating the Silesian uprisings and commissioned uh, by Lech Wałęsa, the leader of the Solidarność movement. What you'll also find here in this very new and, you know, like uh, highly architecturally kind of prized area is a building called the Spodek. Uh, it's a kind of nickname. Uh, it's... Um, basically nicknamed the the flying saucer and it's a result of a competition held in 1958 to design a new stadium and this was won by Maciek Gintov and Maciek Krasinski and it was actually finally opened in 1971. Uh, the stadium hosts sporting events and concerts including bands such as Metallica and Depeche Mode over the years. Urban legends say that Spielberg's Close Encounters of the Third Kind plays every time the building lights turn on. The cultural zone is a lovely walk, uh, as you can see, very interesting architecture. And if you're there in the summer, even nicer. Uh, one of the areas we will go to next is the Silesian Museum. 
Now, this is actually founded in 1929 by the Silesian Parliament, but uh, it was 2015 where it was moved to its its current location. At the kind of the entrance to the museum, you're greeted by the prominent mine shaft hoist tower, uh, which is part of the former Katowice coal mine, which closed in 1999 after 176 years of operation. And now it's a lovely observation tower. You can take an elevator to the top, uh, as long as you have a ticket, of course, from the, uh, the main office. But the rest of the museum is actually composed of kind of 18th century historical buildings, as well as a few uh, modern constructs. But the interesting thing is it's on the site of the, the old coal mine. And actually they used uh, the, the tunnels uh, to, for certain parts of the museum. The, the museum itself is, is, you mainly have the one building open at the moment. I believe more are meant to be open in time. And you'll find kind of uh, Polish art uh, from 1800 to 1945, including a lot of, shall we say, uh, extraterrestrial inspired paintings. Uh, it goes well with the UFO. Uh, but also it's a history museum. Uh, so it's, it takes the, the course of uh, Silesian history and you'll find it presented in Polish, English and German. And notably addressing sensitive issues such as the area's German cultural heritage and the relationship with Germany. The topics a bit taboo under the communist regime. But you'll also find all kinds of uh, other in, uh, like aspects of the history. Uh, and yeah, you will need to spend a uh, considerable amount of time um, in this museum. Well, saying that, you can probably do it in about two hours, I would say. But as you can see, it has a lot. But while we're talking about museums, let's go on to the history of Katowice. So the name Katowice is actually first mentioned in 1598. Though actually, it didn't become a city until 1865. It was formed from a series of smaller villages, such as uh, well, one of the first mentioned, which is Domb, and this was mentioned in 1299. The area was actually originally focused on farming and work in hammer mills. And the area which now houses Katowice was originally ruled by the Polish Silesian dynasty. From 1327, it became part of the Kingdom of Bohemia, part of the Holy Roman Empire. And it was passed to the Habsburg monarch monarchy of uh, Austria in 1526. It was then seized by Prussia in 1742 after the First Silesian War. The Silesian Wars, they were a bit of a conflict between uh, Prussia and Austria over Silesian territory. And after the Third War, the area was actually left severely depopulated and the economy was in ruins. And in 1838, uh, the city was bought by Franz von Winkler and it was made into the headquarters of his estate. Now, the biggest story of Katowice really is the industrial side. Uh, the first coal mine uh, opened in 1788. And then when the, uh, the railway uh, connected Katowice in 1846, it brought it major trade routes with uh, Berlin, Vienna, Warsaw, Krakow, and it really uh, aided the you know, economic and population growth. Uh, Katowice would ha then have its first churches in 1858 and 1860, and it was finally made the city in 1865 due to an act by King Wilhelm I, Hohenzollern of Prussia. The Cathedral of Christ the King uh, was actually, um, the, the construction began in 1927. This was kind of interrupted by the Second World War 
as it was finally completed in 1955. Uh, the stained glass was painted by Stanislav uh, Pogbikowski, uh, while all of the fittings were produced by one man, Mitchislav Krull, in 1973. Uh, the three Silesian bishops are buried in the crypt, and on the left-hand side of the nave, you'll find an altar made of coal to St. Barbara, patron saint of miners, commemorating those who have died in Silesia's mines. Of the many spots of kind of natural beauty in Katowice, you have Kosciuszko Park, which is uh, 72 hectares uh, with over 90 species of trees and shrubs. And this is based in the sort of south of the city. It contains something called the Parachute Tower, uh, which was built in 1937 for the training of parachute jumpers. And in 1939, this was defended by the Polish scouts during the German invasion resulting in the Germans basically blowing up the tower with anti-tank guns. The original tower was 50 meters tall, while the modern reconstruction is about 37 meters. Uh, there's also uh, the Church of St. Michael the Archangel, which is a wooden structure originally built in 1487 and relocated to Katowice beam by beam in 1938. So Katowice, Katowice grew greatly in strength, a large part with kind of investment of foreign industry, uh, including sort of British, and German, and a few other nations were uh, the kind of the industrial magnates were setting up mines uh, and, and things here. However, the population um, is actually split uh, between German and Polish nationalists. And this would lead to a few issues in the future. After World War I, the big changes would occur. Uh, with the defeat of Germany, many of its territories were given to other countries. And the fate of Silesia was one of the more hotly debated territories. The Paris Peace Conference was meant to decide this, but in the end, uh, there was actually uh, voting held uh, by the citizens for whether they wished to be part of Poland or part of Germany. However, there was kind of foul play um, attached to this particular scene, where Germany was said to have bust voters in, as well as applying strong-arm tactics, with threats being made to the jobs who voted for Poland, for example. And there was an organization known as the Free Corps, composed of German army veterans who kind of, uh, kind of came into the cities. And they were basically a power, paramilitary organization whose troops fought any Polish activities. Um, however, the pro-Poland side employed the milita uh, Polish military organization a secret military organization and predecessor of the Polish intelligence force. And this was to fight back with the same force. So there was much infighting going on. And soon this led to what is now known as the Silesian uprisings. And this was a series of free skirmishes uh, between basically the German occupants and the, uh, the Polish occupants of the city. And this was, these were quite bloody conflicts. Uh, they're quite notorious in Polish history. I won't try to go into too much details because it would be a, a long story. But it ended up with the League of Nations having to settle the disputes and eventually Silesia was divided, with the upper region going to Poland and the southern region going to Germany in May 1922. In World War II, the main Polish forces retreated to defend Krakow. 
However, the Polish citizens of Katowice did defend the city, uh, sadly the defenders ultimately being massacred by the German forces. And many of the city's historical and iconic monuments were destroyed, most notably the Great Katowice Synagogue. In 1945, the Red Army liberated the city, and after the war, there was heavy industrial development. Uh, the city was actually briefly renamed to Stalinograd uh, after Stalin's death in 1953, but the people quickly restored it back to Katowice in 1956. In 1968, the University of Silesia was founded, and in 1981, during uh, the protests against Soviet rule, nine protesters died, with 21 injured. And this is an event uh, that was commemorated 10 years on uh, by Lech Wałęsa himself. St. Mary's Church, uh, this was actually built in 1860. And at the time, uh, many of the most respected artists of the day worked on its fittings and decor. The mesmerizing stained glass windows were painted by Adam Bunch. And there's a late Gothic altar in the Sacra Convasion Chapel in the transept. Now, one area which is actually the most popular uh, for the locals to go and relax is one known as the Valley of the Free Ponds, which is actually based up of about 11 different pieces of water, but never mind. It's a little bit outside of the city. Um, so, I mean, I walked it, uh, but it's best to go there by bike, or you have buses 674 or 910, which will take you there. It's actually a very relaxing place, of course, uh, you know, very clean air, lots of uh, wildlife, scenic views, um, wonderful place uh, to go for a walk. And you'll find um, it actually has uh, some beaches for people to enjoy. Um, a few bars dotted along the, uh, the water side. There's a, a fine restaurant called Pan de Rosa, which is well recommended. And there are some areas uh, allowed for fishing as well. It's actually about 125 hectares, and it was established uh, in the 1960s as a leisure space and is now part of the, uh, the kind of the wider forest park of Katowice. Very relaxing area. Uh, I really recommend, especially so in the summer. I've just been to the Museum of the History of Katowice, and I have to say, before I went here, I couldn't quite place this city. I knew it had like industrial origins, but I didn't realize just the extent. This museum is a must see, I have to say, if you come here, if you really want to understand um, the history of Katowice and what's going on here. Now, there are several multimedia exhibitions uh, and it's all in English, which um, is ideal. You know, you have lots of uh, fun interactive displays and really, uh, it, was, it was basically free. I don't know if I just picked the free day of the week, I came on Tuesday, uh, but yeah, it takes you right through the origins, you know, pre limited prehistoric stuff, but then, you know, it goes right through the eras. So you really see how it developed from like a colony of blacksmiths to a village, to a city. It shows the conflicts between Germany and uh, Poland over this region. It tells you about the strikes. It really does go into so much detail. It's uh, an absolute gold mine, this place. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope you've learned something and have some better idea of Katowice now. Uh, as I said, there'll be a part two to this video 
uh, where I go a little bit outside uh, to some of the uh, the mining villages and the parks. So please join again. Uh, thank you for watching and Dozer Bichenya.